special use of the Arabic. The Quran grammar is so high, to prove the Quranic grammar was high, they gave examples. And I'll give you a couple of examples, which will answer all the Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we do reactions. Other than reactions, we also do other things. We've got a second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. You can head there and subscribe, and also watch what we post there if you want us to post something that you want to see let us know both on this channel and the other channel we also have a patreon which you can become a member we launched our page maybe last month and yeah we're looking for members so just feel free to subscribe or become a member to our um, page or channel on patreon we appreciate we appreciate you guys and I posted a video a few days back, you can just check it out and it's free of charge. Anyone can view it. It's under Funny and Jesse. Other than that, um, we've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. And you can find us on iTunes or Podbean. And yeah, if I'm forgetting anything, just check the description box and you'll find links to everything that I've mentioned. And a big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing, sharing, interacting with us giving us things to react to we appreciate you guys so much and may you stay blessed thank you for everything that you've done for us by just watching you guys make our days by just watching you guys change our lives you wouldn't even understand but thank you very much and today i'm going to be reacting to is the quran grammatically correct dr zakir naik and it seems like you guys are fond of Dr. Zaik Naik and yeah, there's a lot of videos about him, of him or maybe, yeah, of him and yeah, I'm excited to see what he has to say about this. Otherwise, I'm excited to be reacting to this. So without wasting time, I'm trying to think if I've forgotten anything. If I've forgotten anything, just forgive me. But without wasting time, let's get into the video. Dr. Zakar. You said there isn't any mistake in Quran. I see more than 20 mistakes in Arabic grammar. And I will tell you some of them. Brother, he said in Baqarah and Hajj, which is right. Asabi'un or Asabi'in? Number one. Number two. Brother, he one, said, one, brother one question one at question. a time, yeah, please. Yeah, but at the same uh, thing, he said in Surah Taha 63, Inna hadhani la sahiran. Mistake. Inna hadhani la sahiran. Can you explain that? And there is more than that uh, mistake. Brother, brother will allow you only the one. first part of the question. The second part will not allow because we have stated we'll allow okay. one question at a time so others get a chance to. Okay. The brother has asked a very good question. I would like to be more concordous and agreeing. He has mentioned all 20 grammatical points. And the book is referring to Abdul Fadi. Abdul Fadi, correct? Is the Quran infallible? I can yeah. see some things. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, my side is good. <laughs> I will answer all 20 together. Because I've read the book. I'll answer all 20, inshallah. Inshallah. Point number one, brother. Point number one. Point number one to be noted that all Arabic grammar is taken from the Quran. Quran was the highest Arabic book, a book which has the maximum level of highest literature. All the Arabic grammar has been derived from the Quran. Quran is the textbook of grammar. Since Quran is the textbook of grammar and all the grammar is derived from the Quran, the Quran can never have a mistake. Point number one. <laughs> point number two. Point number two. Point number two. It is like you know taking a ruler and the ruler is there, has a measurement, and you're saying the measurement is wrong. It sounds illogical. Point number two. In the different tribes of Arabia, 
and you know Arabic, and Dr. William Campbell also will agree with me. In different Arabic tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. In some Arabic tribe, the word is feminine, the same word is even masculine in the other tribes of Arabia. In different tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. Even the gender keeps on changing. So will you check Quran with that faulty grammar? No. And furthermore, the eloquence of Quran is so high. It's so high, it is far superior. And you know there are various books on the internet you go. 12 grammatical mistake, 21 grammatical mistake, Abdul Fadi, 20 grammatical mistake. Do you think the Christian people took out these mistakes? Who took out these mistakes? Do you know who took out? The Muslims. The Muslim scholars like Zamakshari, what they did, that the Quran grammar is so high that it goes against the conventional use of the Arabic. The Quran grammar is so high, to prove the Quranic grammar was high, they gave examples. And I'll give you a couple of examples which will answer all these 20 questions. They give the example, like read in the Quran, it says that the people of Lut, salam, they rejected all the messengers. They rejected the messenger that's mentioned. Dr. William Campbell said, the people of Noah, they rejected the messengers. We know from history that there was only one messenger sent to them. So it has a grammatical mistake. Quran should have said, the people rejected the messenger, not messengers. I agree with you. With layman grammar like how you and I know, it may be a mistake. But if you read the books written by Arabs, what is the beauty of the Quran? The beauty of the Quran is, why does the Quran refer messengers instead of messenger? You know why? Because we know that the basic message of all the messengers was same. That there is one God. About Tawheed. About Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By mentioning the people of Ruth salam the people of Noah rejected the messenger. It says by rejecting Ruth salam they are indirectly rejecting all the messengers. <laughs> see the beauty. See the eloquence. Alhamdulillah. You may think it's a mistake. It's not a mistake. Similarly, people like Anush Suraj says that Quran says, Kun Fayakun, be and it is. It should be Kun Fakana, be and it was. Agreed, past tense is Kun Fakana in Arabic. It's not Kun Fayakun, but the Kun Fayakun is more superior. It says, Allah, it was, it is, and can do. Past, present, and future. Thank you, Dr. Naik. I'm confused. I'm very, very confused. Is there anything wrong with admitting that yes, there's an error? He did agree with the person that was asking the questions, but then he says it's normal. Why normalize something that you will criticize if you find it in, say, a Bible? Because even now, Christians should start saying that's what's supposed to be in the book, not what whatever the case is. I know translation, translating something actually changes the way something is written. That's a fact. But then if you should sit down and say, um, this thing is grammatically correct, then there's something wrong. How about just saying, yes, there was an error, yes, there was this. Or maybe is it that people don't want to accept that the Quran has errors? I would like for someone to answer me just that. Because even if it's normal for humans to error, these books are written and typed by human beings. So room for error should always be expected. Even if you take years and years of trying to perfect something, there will always be that one hidden error. But if this guy was just going through the Quran to find out the wrongs or the mistakes in it, then he's wrong. He should focus on the bigger picture. Of saying okay like dr zaik said at the end of the day all the messengers or prophets of god came to this world to preach one message and one message only that is that there's only one god so this issue of trying to find errors in the bible trying to find errors in the quran trying to find errors in the hadith trying to find errors in all other types of religious books should be the last thing that a human being does. There's many things that there is to learn in this world. But, but of course, there's nothing wrong with the question that he asked. I'm sure he needed 
clarification which is not bad at all maybe he was maybe he was satisfied with the answer but at the end of the day it's no more to error even as we talk we make mistakes even as we carry out work we make mistakes which don't really matter to me let's yeah anyway let's let me know what you think about this video what you think about the question and what, how you how you feel about the response from the from the Zaid Naik and let me know what you feel in the comment section below make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video